Hi everybody, I'm Florian and today I will present our paper on event-triggered augmented refitting of Gaussian process regression for seasonal data, or short, EVAS GPR. We, that's Dominic Grimm and me, we conduct research at the TUM Campus Straubing for Biotechnology and Sustainability of the Technical University of Munich. For our talk, we decided to use a rather intuitive way of explaining EVAS GPR's main ideas. If you're interested in more details, please see our paper, which is linked below, or feel free to contact us. Let's have a look at the outline of my talk first. First, I will present the motivation for our paper. Then, I will give an overview on EVAS GPR, which is the algorithm we developed. Afterwards, we will have a look at the experimental setup and the results. And finally, we will draw some conclusions. Time series forecasting is a growing domain with diverse applications, for example in business, energy or medicine. And with our work, we address a common time series forecasting problem. But first, we need to collect historical time series data. We focused on seasonal data, so values with a periodical component. This characteristic is true for many time series. And based on this data, we train a prediction model. Once our prediction model is ready, the online phase starts. So at every time step, we predict the future values. However, changes of the system behavior over time are a typical issue in time series forecasting. This may be caused by internal as well as external influences. For instance, Recently, many time series forecasting systems were affected by the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. And as our prediction model is based on the previous data distribution, its predictions might not be useful anymore. They could even cause damage, such as financial loss. And that's where EOS GPR comes into place. We focus on seasonal time series and changes of the output scale and try to solve the problem of changing data distributions during the online phase. During the offline phase, EVAS GPR is identical to the common approach. We first collect historical time series data and train our initial prediction model. But during the online phase, EVAS GPR is different. First, we predict the next target value. After each prediction, we run an online change point detection algorithm to check for a changing data distribution. If we do not detect a change point, we continue with our current prediction model. At a third time step, we might detect a change point. But online change point detection algorithms are prone to false alarms. For this reason, and also for efficiency, we included a check of the output scale. By doing so, we set the values of the current season in relation to previous seasons. And if this deviation does not exceed a certain threshold, we again continue with our current prediction model. At a certain time step, both the change point detection and the check of the output scale may be fulfilled. And then we trigger the augment and refit step. At the augmentation step, we update existing data with information on the current output scale. Then we refit our current prediction model using this augmented data. And this updated model is then used for further predictions. After all, our predictions are useful again. And all these described steps are done for every time step. So first we predict the next value, then we run an online change point detection, we check the output scale, and in case both are fulfilled, we augment and refit. And that's EBUS GPR, a novel online time series forecasting algorithm that is able to quickly react to shifts in the target variable scale of seasonal data. After this overview on EBUS GPR, let's summarize its characteristics. EVAS GPR is event triggered, based on the change point detection and the check of the output scale. Another way of handling changing data distributions in time series forecasting is to periodically refit the model. Compared to such approaches, 
eVest GPR is computationally more efficient as refittings are only performed in case of a detected change. Beyond that, we employ an augmented refitting. We thereby reuse and update existing data. This enables a quicker reaction than approaches that require a certain amount of new samples. As prediction model, we decided to use Gaussian process regression. Its characteristics, such as including uncertainties of a prediction, are profitable with the practical use of forecasts in mind. And finally, our approach is focused on seasonal data with changes of the output scale. Periodical processes and output scale changes are very common in time series forecasting, so it is potentially useful for many applications. Regarding the online change point detection, we tested different algorithms and we finally selected change finder based on the results on simulated data. Regarding augmentation, a scaling of the existing data led to the best results compared to virtual sample generation approaches. As already mentioned, we decided to use a rather intuitive way of explaining EVOS GPR's main ideas for this talk. But for sure, we also know the math and theory behind it. So if you are interested, see our paper, which is linked below, or feel free to contact us. We conducted several experiments to evaluate EVOS GPR. We used the simulated data for two purposes. First, to parameterize the whole pipeline, and second, to analyze the behavior of EVOS GPR. Regarding real-world data, we included such without output scale changes to test the robustness and with output scale changes to assess its performance. Furthermore, we included several comparison partners. Some of them have a similar resource consumption compared to EBUS GPR. M-Base, so just using the offline trained model without any refitting is computationally most efficient. Beyond that, we included three approaches which also employ a change point detection. CPD scaled just uses the predictions of M-Base and scales them by the same factor we use for augmentation in EVOS GPR. CPD retrain also employs a retraining after a detected change point, but without the augmentation step. And CPD MW is similar, but only uses the samples of the current season for the retraining. And as already mentioned, a computationally exhaustive way to handle changing data distributions in time series forecasting is to periodically refit the model. Regarding such approaches, we included PR1 and PR2, which employ a retraining at every respective every second time step. Beyond that, we included moving window GPR. This is an algorithm which was published by Ni et al. and combines a periodical refitting with a dual updating and pre-processing mechanism. To compare the results, we use two evaluation metrics. First, the root mean squared error or short RMSE, which is defined as follows. This is a very common metric for regression tasks. However, RMSE is scale dependent, so we also included RMSE ratio. For RMSE ratio, we set the RMSE performance of a specific method in relation to the performance we achieve with MBase. And this enables us to compare the results of simulated scenarios which are on a different scale. To explain the variation on the simulated data, I would like to introduce a simplified example. In the plot, one can see the base series as well as the change series with the output scale change. Furthermore, we have data during the offline phase to train the initial model and during the online phase to evaluate the performance of the different approaches. We are able to adjust the amplitude as well as the length of a season. Regarding the output scale change, we can vary the maximum manipulation factor. Beyond that, we have a slope parameter kappa, which controls the increase of the change factor up to delta max. And beyond that, 
we will write the start and the end indices of the output scale change. So in summary, we were able to vary the duration as well as the time of occurrence via t start and t end, the extent via delta max, and the speed via the slope parameter coupler. In total, we simulated various scenarios to select the online change point detection and the augmentation method and to parameterize the whole pipeline. Furthermore, we experienced a broad applicability of EVOS GPR on further experiments with various different output scale changes. Due to time reasons, we are not able to go deeper into the results. So for more information, please see our, our paper or feel free to contact us. Besides simulated data, we evaluated EVOS GPR on real-world datasets. Regarding datasets without output scale changes, we did not observe any false augmented refittings. So EVOS GPR was robust on these. Furthermore, we used five datasets with output scale changes. And first, we compared EVOS GPR with approaches with a similar resource consumption. Cache your data was collected in our current research project plant grid and consists of weekly sales of a horticultural retailer. And for this data set, we experienced a significant sales increase due to the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. The plot shows the RMSE, which is achieved by each of the methods, and the dotted line marks the best result. As you can see here, EVOS GPR performed best in comparison to the other methods and we outperformed the second best competitor by 14.4%. We further included four common seasonal forecasting datasets from different domains. And as you can see in all plots, EVOS GPR performed best in all cases. And we outperformed the second best competitor with a margin of up to 41.9%. So in summary, EVOS GPR achieved a mean improvement of 20.8% compared to the second best methods. We further benchmarked EVOS GPR against computationally exhaustive approaches. We both compared the approaches regarding RMSE and the CPU time in seconds to measure the computational resource consumption. Let's first have a look at the RMSEs. For cashier data, we can see that EVOS GPR was outperformed by MW GPR, however, only by 2.5%. On the other datasets, we observed that EVOS GPR was outperformed by some methods, but for visitor nights, only by 0.5%. For a fair comparison, let's also consider the runtime evaluation. The following plots are drawn on a logarithmic scale. For cashier data, we can see that EVOS GPR is way more efficient than all the other methods. Compared to the best performer based on RMSE, we have a 6.7 fold runtime reduction. A similar analysis can be done for all the other datasets. And as you can see, EVOS GPR has always by far the lowest runtime with a runtime reduction of up to 247 fold. In summary, EVOS GPR achieved a rather similar performance regarding RMSE for cashier data and for visitor nights. And we furthermore, we experienced a significant runtime reduction in relation to all these computationally exhaustive methods. This is a big plus for several applications. In conclusion, we developed a novel online time series forecasting algorithm. EVOS GPR is focused on seasonal data with output scale changes. This is a common circumstance in time series forecasting. Our experiments on simulated data have shown a broad applicability of EVOS GPR. Besides, we demonstrated a good performance as well as the computational efficiency on real-world data. And last but not least, all our code is published on GitHub. Nevertheless, there is room for future research. 
EVS GPR would probably benefit a lot of improvements regarding the online change point detection, a really essential part of the algorithm. One interesting extension of EVOS GPR is to optimize its parameters individual for each data set. For example, during the offline training of the prediction model. And finally, EVOS GPR is model agnostic, so the integration of another prediction model seems interesting. But for now, I would like to acknowledge the whole Grim Lab team. Special thanks go to my supervisor Dominic Grimm for all your support. Furthermore, thanks to all people who are involved in the plant grid research project and to the Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture for funding our research. And finally, thanks for your attention. If you want to see more details, please see our paper which is linked below or feel free to contact us in case you have any questions. Thanks.